Sound has no substance. It's simply a ripple of waves through air. Ripples that begin at a vibrating object, like a string, and are gathered and processed by ears and brains. When that vibration is steady and regular, it has a musical sound, a clear pitch and tone. Musical tones are, are built from fundamentals, the note you hear, and then harmonics. We'll look at several different instrument sounds and their different harmonic profiles. Harmonics are present in every sound. They are extra pitches with a predictable mathematical relationship to the fundamental. As we go further in the study of melody and harmony, the harmonic series will continue to be important. But for now, let's take a look at some examples. A very simple sound example is a sine wave. There it is right there. Its vibration speed is fixed, and this one is vibrating 444 times a second. It sounds like a note. In fact, in our system, it's the note A. Very few sounds are as simple as this. We could complicate it by varying the vibration the, or frequency, or perhaps changing the volume, what we call amplitude. With a little variation, a sine wave can be musically pleasing. Most normal musical instruments vibrate in ways that produce more complicated waves. When we look at the shape of these waves with a scope, it's clear there's more going on. The shape of the wave has strong edges and can look like a saw or a square. Here you can see I've got the oscillator set to a square wave, or close to it. Here's a saw wave. Each shape has a recognizable sound. Learn the sounds of sine, saw, and square waves to shape your musical arrangements. One more important shape is pretty chaotic. It's a mix of all possible frequencies at once. It's noise. The sound of a waterfall, wind in trees, or a crashing cymbal are examples. Noise has a place in arrangements, and with some modulation, it can be soothing or supportive. You remember the sine wave, how it looked when I played. There's a big spike at 440 vibrations per second, and then a couple of smaller representations. These pitches are in the sound, although they're kind of hard to hear. We call them overtones because they're above the fundamental. They're also harmonics. Every sound has harmonics. It's a very simple sound with only a couple of harmonics that go away after a bit. Let's listen to a bamboo flute. It has harmonics too, but you'll see it's a more complicated sound. It has the same harmonics as the sine wave, plus a few more at the top, and a lot of noise components, all that rough stuff that you see in between there. Every sound has its own signature look for harmonics. Here's a plucked string. Extra harmonics, more harmonics than a, a, a flute. And you can also see an initial attack that's chaotic. It's what gives it its energy. It's a great sound. A guitar has a signature sound, and as does a violin. It's also a string. Let's see how it looks. More, more high frequency energy makes it sound kind of raspy. Oh, I love the sound of a violin. It also has a better, smoother initial attack. It's because it's bowed instead of plucked. A trumpet. The same harmonics, but in a slightly different profile. Initial attacks are very, very important. Listen to a kick drum. 
you can see the big thump down here and then a lot of noise components. Compare that to the snare or the hi-hat. The hi-hat's a small cymbal and you can see it's got a lot of high frequencies. Maybe a crash cymbal. Oops, let's try that again. There we go. So there was a drum and then the crash cymbal and you can see the difference. Drummers often hit a kick drum and a crash at the same time for a big dramatic moment. Let's go over to the piano. The piano. Okay, so when um, a string or a column of air vibrates, it vibrates along its entire length. The piano has 88 notes, and on many of the notes, there are three strings. It vibrates from uh, right here uh, all the way back to what would be the nut on a guitar or the bridge, so the nut to the bridge. The bridge on a piano curves. Those strings are long. In fact, these longest strings are thick and, you know, on my piano, seven feet long. Well, the length of the string vibrates a long curving arc like this. I'll show you a picture of it if I can find one. But it also vibrates in segments. In fact, the exact halfway point of that segment, and I'm going to try to reach in here and play it on the lowest string. If I touch it gently and play, will produce a tone that's exactly twice the frequency of the fundamental. At the halfway point, I get an, what's called an octave. We'll just call it twice the fundamental. And as I slide my finger along the string to say a quarter of the way, I get another octave over that. Now as it turns out, by sliding my finger along the string, I can emphasize different harmonics. get some really interesting sounds that way. Here's a fundamental note C, but within that sound are contained other harmonics. In fact, exactly twice that, and then a more mathematical um, formula going up, which we'll take a look at in some pictures. All those notes are quietly part of the original sound of that low C. In fact, if I gently hold this C down without making any noise at all, and then strike the, a higher note, you'll hear it continue. What's happening is this string here is ringing sympathetically. Hi. Okay, so here I am with the guitar, and the guitar is a string instrument like the piano or violin. Uh, each string vibrates from here, the nut, to here, the bridge, or is shortened by pressing down on the neck. As I shorten the string, the pitch goes up. But what we want to talk about are harmonics. Well, the exact halfway point between here and here is the twelfth fret. And on this guitar, there are two dots. I think you can probably see them. If I lightly touch, like I did on the piano, I get a note, an octave above the fundamental of the string. If I find the uh, one-third point on the string, which is here, I get a note that we call a fifth. another octave, and then continuing they're very faint but you probably can hear them. Every string as it rings 
contains in it the ghosts of the upper harmonics. Every string rings with a fundamental and also upper harmonics. The overtones are what gives each instrument its sound. So when I play a big E major chord, let's see if it's in tune. Not really. When I play a big E major chord, like you've probably played on guitar if you play guitar, I'm playing a basic note, the fundamental note E, and then the fifth, which is one of the harmonics, an octave, a major third, which is another harmonic, a fifth, and then another harmonic way, way up there. It's a whole chord, and it's also part of the harmonic series. I could keep talking about instruments all day, showing you, you different ones. For instance, how brass instruments uh, basically use the harmonic series to create all of the notes that they play. But here's the last one I'll show you. It's a, a woodwind instrument, a bamboo flute. A flute and many of the woodwind instruments are simply columns of air, empty in the center. As I change the position of my fingers, the column of air's length changes. The pitch changes. Shorter column of air, higher note. I can also blow a little harder into the flute and get the first harmonic to pop out. Here's the lower note, the fundamental of the length of the tube. And then if I blow a little harder, the first harmonic. And then maybe if I blow a little harder, <laughs> a melody grows out of the science, the physics, the math of sound, but it also has a, a lot to do with our sense of storytelling, of narrative, and of beauty. I hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you next time.